So today, I want to talk to you a little bit about contributing. <laughs> Not actually money. Um, <laughs> uh, so I guess the con contributions I'm talking about, uh, many people will probably first think about when you're contributing to an open source project, you're contributing code or changes in that way, but that's not true. There's a lot of different ways that we can contribute to an open source project. Uh, in particular, I'm gonna be focusing today on Selenium, obviously, um, but there, this kind of applies to many other projects that you'll find on GitHub, Bit, or like Bitbucket, or various other open source platforms. Uh, so things that we're gonna talk about um, that you can contribute to are the uh, other items like not just code or bug fixes that pertain to maybe something that you care about or someone else has reported, but you can do things like improve the test suite of Selenium itself. Um, we have documentation. Uh, there's seleniumhq.org. Uh, there's also a new, I guess, uh, a new documentation site that we're trying to work on, but it's not quite there yet. Uh, there are helping with other other people's issues on the issue tracking list, uh, reproducing their, their problems, um, code reviewing pull requests if you feel capable enough to look at someone's proposed changes and give them feedback. Uh, also, responding to the users lists, uh, like Google Groups or Stack Overflow and that sort of thing. Um, so let's talk about that first. Uh, there, there's various forums that uh, Selenium uses for discussion of, of uh, I guess, you know, issues that users encounter. Uh, maybe some of you have used some of these, but one of the things that make these, this, these forums work is other users responding and giving advice, feedback, answering questions, and that's, that's a very important thing to contribute to the project. Uh, we, our Selenium users group would probably not be as active if we didn't have very many people responding to the repos. If, you know, it, it would feel like a black hole otherwise, and we don't want that to happen. So uh, having more people follow up on, uh, you know, post the users list, I would say you don't need to necessarily respond to everything. Don't try to do that only respond to things that you know about. Uh, a good learning tool also is res looking at people's questions and going, oh, I don't know how that actually works, and either looking into it or, you know, hopefully following along and seeing if someone else gives some advice. Uh, I would highly recommend not trying to double post answers. It gets confusing um, to the author, so if if the answer that has been provided isn't just flat out wrong, um, don't really add to the discussion unless, unless you have something very important. Uh, it often gets confusing or muddled if we have multiple answers that are close but not quite the same and then the user doesn't know exactly what the difference is um, or you know, future people coming and finding the posts might be confused also. So try it. Similar with Stack Overflow, but they have a better system. There's an accepted answer and there's upvoted answers. Um, we attempted a long time ago to have our own Selenium Stack Overflow Stack Exchange, but that fizzled. Um, they wanted it to be in more of a QA Stack Overflow site, <clears throat> which I think is uh, mainly the way you would do it. I think I believe there's an SQA Stack Overflow site. Um, but if, if you go in there, there should be tags for Selenium WebDriver. Uh, you'll also find things for like Firefox driver, Chrome driver, all the various browsers, and you should be able to find quickly with their interface what questions haven't been answered um, that you could help and contribute to. Uh, upvoting other answers um, from others that have provided correct or mostly correct answers is also beneficial. Uh, we have times in the past found accepted answers by someone who posted the question who didn't actually understand the question or the answer and they were both kind of incorrect and then we never get the person to change the accepted answer. So upvoting helps that um, because upvoting will help promote a more correct answer. Uh, we, 
we, we've certainly had a few instances of that happen. Um, there's also uh, an IRC channel that myself, Simon even sometimes joins, and various other commu uh, committers join the IRC channel. Uh, this is uh, a place or a forum to get more immediate feedback. Uh, we sit in there as a form of contribution in answering uh, questions that come in to the IRC channel. Um, it is helpful to have people in there that know, I guess, uh, a more have a more in-depth experience with Selenium that can field questions or even just generically help. We get varying ranges of questions in there from people who you know, are, are a little bit confused about a particular web driver API, which is a seemingly easy question, to people who just don't even know how to program or code and are asking questions that don't even make sense because they just don't even know what question they should be asking. So you get, you get these wide-ranging um, visitors to the IRC channel. And it's helpful to have people in there responding, uh, encouraging, hopefully not being, there, there's a tone or a language that one needs to be careful about. Uh, there's a lot of people who come in here and expect things provided to them. Like, if you, I found the IRC channel, I'm asking for support, I need support now. Um, Myself, even Simon, uh, are not paid to do Selenium. We're not paid to be in the IRC channel. In fact, probably my work would, if they knew how much time in the past I've spent on the IRC channel answering things, they might question my commitment to the <laughs> Selenium project. Uh, I've certainly spent many hours uh, more than I probably should have in there. Um, but that's, that's to say I'm not obligated to answer anyone's questions in there. When things get busy for me, I might be in the IRC channel but not answering because there's usually around 150 other people logged into the channel and hopefully one of them can also answer. So it's not something that is expected for every, one person to you know, be the user support. It's all of us. Uh, so when someone comes in and starts talking about why is Selenium so shitty, I, kid you not, people will come in and say, why is it so horrible? Why doesn't it work? Um, but we take, there's a whole other talks on how to deal with trolls, and that's what we get a lot of times. So just answering the question at its core value and ignoring every bit of, you know, adjective that they might have added to the question that they didn't need to is, uh, is, is beneficial to the project, it's beneficial to the IRC channel, it keeps the tone um, pleasant and welcoming, and that's what we wanna do. We actually wanna keep the tone in most of these forums very welcoming to users um, and very helpful. That's what we wanna be seen as. Uh, we don't want to be seen as people just yelling at people for not knowing something that they didn't know. They didn't know, that's why they came to ask. So let's help them. Uh, I want to talk about, now, issues and bug reports as a way of con uh, contributing to the project. There are two aspects to this that I want to talk about. And the first is how to log a good issue report. Uh, I want to mention that because often is the case. Hopefully that you can see this or read this. This is, uh, I just pulled this up because this is actually one that came up during the keynote and I already, I'll show you, I already closed it, but someone logged this bug on GitHub asking these questions, providing zero information in the bug posts, and how helpful is this to the community? It's, I have, I actually have um, a handful of bookmarklets that I use, and if you guys know what a bookmarklet, it's a snippet of JavaScript that automatically does something for you. And in this case, I have a few that, I'm sorry, this is not rendering right right now, but uh, uh, I have a boilerplate that says, this says right here, this is a question rather than an issue. Please send questions to the Selenium user group, which is a link. Uh, and for issues, please provide a concise reproducible test case and describe what results you are seeing and what you expect. 
and C contributing dot markdown. Um, that's my boilerplate. If you see this and I've given this, I don't mean to, to offend the people. I'm trying to be nice, but these are bugs versus support form. There's other places to do that, as I talked about earlier. And so I've closed the issue. And thankfully, this user didn't take it offensively, and they said, OK, thank you. Great. <laughs> um, we don't want, I, 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 it causes a lot of churn for me and other developers and makes them want to not follow the bug reports as they're coming in when we get issues that we can't do anything about. So in order to provide a good bug report for us to do something, I would say please provide all the relevant information even if you think it doesn't actually, uh, it's not the issue that you're looking at. Uh, it, it doesn't necessarily matter that, that maybe it doesn't seem relevant, but it is relevant to us. So um, a lot of times people, well, lately it's been uh, Firefox isn't launching. All right, which version? They didn't say. And if they say immediately 47, I'd go, well, you know, there's a bug in Mozilla and we've got issue 210 or 2110 um, that's already tracking that issue and we duplicate it out. Maybe some of you have already encountered that. <laughs> um, but it's very useful to get all of those, you know, just the minutia of detail, the versions of for everything. Uh, the clear and concise description, um, hope this goes without saying, but sometimes people get very long-winded in their description, and that's hard to read if you've gone multiple paragraphs. If you're not able to say what the problem is in one paragraph, you please try to rephrase it uh, and make it concise. Uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or a link to a page. This is so important. We're doing browser automation. We're dealing with dynamic web pages. There is no way for us to really be able to reproduce any issue if you don't provide the page that caused it. I will try, and we constantly try to reassure users, yes, Selenium has tests that make sure click works. There's no way we're shipping Selenium without click working, but we get bug reports all the time. Click does not work. Okay, what, which page, what HTML, what CSS, what JavaScript is on that element that causes it to not work? There are so many edge cases. It's all bloody edge cases, as I mean. Um, so JS Fiddle is actually an excellent resource for someone to quickly you know, sketch up a page. Like you can add HTML, CSS, JavaScript right there in a page, save the fiddle, and now you've provided the reproducible test case or a page to everyone. I wouldn't call this a test case. It's the page to reproduce the issue on. And you can do that without sharing any company secrets. Uh, ho hopefully you can just get a snippet of the HTML. Uh, there's a lot of comp complexities in today's browsers uh, or full stack application websites. So I understand that it, this, this is probably one of the most difficult things for people to do, but it's, probably the most crucial things. If we can't reproduce the issue, we're gonna close it. We just, there's nothing we can do if we can't reproduce your issue. Uh, along those lines, what's extremely helpful is no matter what language you choose, it, it doesn't necessarily matter, but JavaScript, C Sharp, Python, Ruby, JavaScript, uh, even some of the other ones that we don't really primarily support in, in Selenium, like PHP and Perl, or even Haskell, provide us a snippet of programming script that reproduces the issue. Uh, we, often you find people will, when it says steps to reproduce, they list steps, go to this page, they write it out, click this link, do this. That, that's not helpful or easy for us. It makes someone else do work of creating a script to then produce the issue. So please provide that script also. These two are, are, the HTML, CSS, JavaScript is the most crucial. The script is also just, it's a helping, help someone else run your, inc reproduce your issue and uh, get on. So 
Sorry. The next thing, the other thing to do with bug issues uh, that is contributing to the project is to look at the open issues and if no one's talked about it or commented on it, see if you can reproduce it. Uh, can, is this a valid issue? Can you, have they given enough, enough information for someone else who doesn't have their application, who may not know all the things that they know for how this, they encountered the bug, can you reproduce it in your environment? Uh, that is another, another key piece that we have, probably why we have a, a few extra hundreds of issues is because we don't have uh, actual reproduction on issues and just leaving a comment saying, yeah, I've reproduced it, here's how I did it. If you've done something, if you had to do something like write a script or do a JS fiddle or something like that, provide that too in the bug, that's very helpful. Now you've done the work that someone else doesn't have to do. Uh, and But I do want to note, don't provide redundant feedback. It's every comment does go to a few of us, every single post. Uh, I, I currently, I don't want to change my settings, but right now I am getting every single comment and every single issue on the Selenium repo. And I know some others do that too. So if someone just says plus one, well thanks for the spam. <laughs> like there's a, there's a like button on every comment, or there, please provide valuable comments and valuable feedback. Otherwise, you're, you're, you're literally spamming people with that. Um, and I put this note about uh, redirect users to appropriate other locations. Hopefully, most of you know that the driver implementations are actually being now implemented by the browser vendors themselves. Google does their own, Edge, Microsoft, Firefox, even though we're, ha we're kind of half in, half out the door, uh, Marionette is coming. It's not fully, I guess, GA. It doesn't have everything in it. People are still encountering issues. But we're quickly coming to the precipice of not being able to use the open source Firefox driver anymore. Like the latest version of Firefox 47 doesn't work right now. We've been assured that the next re point release of it should work. But 48, uh, it's not going to work at all. We, we, and there's no notion of the open source Firefox driver going to, to work on that version. People are going to have to move to, to Marionette. So all these issues need to get then directed. We're, we can't do anything about them in the Selenium GitHub repo and source. Uh, there's nothing there to, to work on those issues that people are going to encounter. So we need to help redirect some users over to the Bugzilla in that case. and. Let's see, there's Safari is coming out with, uh, from Apple, Safari driver. So all these various locations, we've tried to put it in the GitHub issues template, but people don't like to read all the time. So <laughs> helping there. Um, so documentation is another awesome, and actually the place where I started contributing to the Selenium project is I went to SeleniumHQ.org, and I was like, I don't, I don't, there's lots of verbiage on there, and personally, I don't, <clears throat> I don't read. <laughs> so slap myself, because I, I'm not going to read 10 paragraphs for something. I want to see a code example. So I went to SeleniumHQ.org, found the web driver docs, and noticed that half of the API commands didn't have an example. There just wasn't any code. I, I just want to see the code example. So that was one of the first things I did is went in and added examples and that was helped me learn Selenium in, in initially, but also give back to the project. So I added and made sure there was examples for Java, .NET, Python, and Ruby. On ev if you've seen the site, you can see that there's examples for all four of them on the main, uh, on the main API calls. Um, so doing things like that is, is beneficial. We have on that, on the Selenium HQ site, there's a edit link at the very top. If you click on it, it'll help you generate a pull request. I will then see that and then hopefully merge that. <laughs> so those are, those are awesome to get. We have another repo called um, this Selenium HQ docs. That was an effort started 
two, three years ago, maybe more. Um, but we're trying to revamp the documentation. It's a slow process because documentation is probably, if, how, how, it's, how important is documentation at your own company if you are in a very, I don't know, um, enterprise level, then documentation has its own team that's funded. Uh, if you're in open source, you have people who need to volunteer to do it, and how many people are going to volunteer to work on documentation? And as proof from our own project, it's very, very little. So this is uh, always a struggling area of, of resource um, that could use help. Uh, wiki pages too. Um, our wiki is horrendously, horrendously out of date. Um, you can do pull, well, you can't really do pull requests to the wiki, which is difficult. You can clone it, um, but usually if you just log a, an issue with either a diff or a delta or something explaining how to edit the wiki, I'll, I'll apply the change uh, as quick as I can or delete the page. <laughs> if you point out a page that I, is horrible, I, I often will do that. Um, code review. Um, pull requests. We, get, we actually have a whole bunch of co pull requests that maybe haven't gotten review or just are sitting there kind of stale. It helps move some of them along if you go ahead and you know chime in on maybe giving some feedback or uh, thinking that something is, is good to go. Um, it, it's, it's sometimes difficult because we don't, we have in Selenium, we have so many different languages, so many different aspects of the project. Uh, I, I, in particular, really only look at Java and Python. If something's in Ruby or .NET, I'm, I, I ignore it because I, I don't have expertise there and I'm not gonna do anything about it. So it's, it's helpful if you have the subject matter expertise to help continue getting pull requests uh, in better shape. Um, if you notice a pull request doesn't have tests for what it's changing, maybe add a comment about that. We do have tests and thinking of tests. Um, this is probably an accurate portrayal of what most projects are like. We have unit tests that cover a lot of things, but you know, maybe it's not all together perfect. Uh, we could use some more coverage. Uh, you are, Selenium, as Selenium users, you are hitting edge cases that we can't necessarily preconceive. If you've got an edge case and you want to add it to the Selenium test suite, you can. Uh, we also are, it's kind of in early phases still, but over at Mozilla, Andreas uh, is adding a test suite for the W3C spec itself. So if you want to make sure that your particular case, your you know tricky element that needs clicking on or needs hovering over, if you want to make sure that that continues to work, it would be awesome to have that in the test suite that all the browser vendors use to make sure that their driver is okay to ship. So ima imagine the Microsoft and Safari and Mozilla testing to make sure your widget works before they ship any changes. So that, that's crucial <laughs> and could be a very good value add for, for both Selenium as a project and you as a user, consumer. Um, I guess the last thing, uh, the last contribution type of thing is your code changes or pull requests. And these are even more awesome uh, if, if done well. <laughs> Uh, I, I, we do love to see pull requests, um, but if you're doing something new or that would be considered feature-like, uh, come and talk to us first, because it's really, I don't know, it, get, it gets to feel almost personal sometimes. Uh, people take it too personally when we close pull requests on them because they're trying to do something that doesn't align with the values of the project or something that we feel could be done elsewhere or differently. So it's nice to come to the IRC channel when we're there and talk to us, say, hey, I'm trying to do this. And guess what? I want to propose a change to 
you know, this area of code, come and talk to us. We don't like closing pull requests um, without merging them, but we often have to, uh, just because they're trying to do something that doesn't quite fit um, with the project or how the W3C spec is moving forward. So in, in but one thing I could say with your pull requests is pretty, try to leave a concise description of what you're changing and most importantly, why you're changing it. Uh, it sometimes that is lost in translation just from your diff. Um, and hopefully you're doing this at your work too, but Slam project likes tests. So if you're changing something, please make sure there's a test that if you were to run your test beforehand would break, but then after your change would pass. Those are very awesome to see um, added to the test suite. So, does anyone know where the Selenium tech support is? It's right here, sorry. <laughs> uh, we are Selenium tech support, every one of us. That's it, there's no paid staff. So keep, keep in mind that everyone, every one of you has only so much time to contribute or potentially help, and so do the rest of everyone else who's providing that support. So how do we make money? That was my last thing I just want to briefly touch on. This is an awesome little Git repo of how all the various um, ways to make money uh, in open source. Um, I, I'm actually listed, my, my form of making money on open source is listed in there, and my form is I work for an employer who happens to allow me to work on open source in my spare time, and so I'm paid by my employer to do my job, and then I carve out portions of my time to contribute to open source. That's how I make money on open source. There's more direct ways that, it's, this is a, awesome uh, little repo that lists all that. There, but there are so, so plenty of ways to make money off of open source. And hopefully you can find yourself into one of those slices. I don't necessarily like, we're, we're all providing something that's highly valuable as seen in the industry. Um, developers and QA, that's the reason why we have jobs, why we're paid. It is something valuable, so we don't, it's not, that point is not lost on open source. Um, you know, people like Simon right now who don't get paid at all. I don't even know how he's doing it. <laughs> oh, he has more information later. But um, so that that was that was it for this talk. Um, and I want to use the rest of the time to answer any questions if you guys have some. Do we have a mic for? I'll repeat the question if you go ahead. <laughs> Safari driver is not able to handle alerts is the question. Um, Will the new Safari driver be able to handle alerts? Um, so the, the current Safari driver doesn't handle alerts and that's because it's a primarily JavaScript based implementation and the, Chrome, the Safari extension, which is how it's been coded, doesn't allow you access into controlling or preventing um, those alerts in a, in a nice way. So that's why it doesn't work. Will Safari driver provided by Apple work with alerts? It should because that's in the W3C spec. I can't tell you for sure if it does or not because I haven't tested it, but I do happen to have, um, I've got right here, uh, I've got Mac OS uh, Sierra, and I'm now personally just starting to play with it. So I, I will be able to answer that question later today if you find me. Does it handle alerts? Is 
questions. <laughs> so he's, uh, the question, uh, I think, is, do, so you're having, you're having issues with starting up, uh, so during a, a test execution run, your browser just stops. And the same ones will work in Windows. So there's there's various things that could be in play. Well, okay. So there's there's problems with um, like I guess if I understand the problem, it's I have a test suite that crashes browsers intermittently on certain OSs. Some OSs it doesn't. Um, I'm, and where is the issue? Essentially, is is the crux of the problem. Where where is where is the browser crash? When and well, when it happens could be intermittent. Um, so you can have quite a few things in play on these very complex issues that would take someone's a lot of someone's time to try to troubleshoot. Uh, that um, so it could be the browser itself. You could be hitting a bug with the browser itself for the platform, which then all of a sudden that's the browser vendors. You could be hitting a bug with how we've implemented the driver, which could be a problem in, if it's Safari in itself. It could be a problem with the Safari extension or the Firefox extension, or you know one of those various things. So that that's something that we could potentially do, but then if it's then in the future, that's going to Mozilla. So that's going to be a Mozilla bug or that's going to be a, an Apple bug. Um, these are the really hard bugs that do require a developer full time to be investigating in. And so some of those are ones that I just, I just, I can't. I don't have the time or energy or effort to go into those in-depth bugs of why a browser is crashing intermittently only in your test suite. So um, that's that's again an importance of providing a reproducible test suite. But yeah. Okay. So it, it also when you're talking about you're you're talking about something with test ng. So you're dealing with multiple moving pieces here. Well, I know, but you're, you're talking about now using TestNG and using Selenium and the platform, and your, your, your OS and your browser. You have multiple things that could be pro causing the problem. So you're, I know you're, you're logging issues with Selenium, you're logging issues with TestNG, you're logging issues with, say, a browser, and no one else is doing anything for you. I, well, someone else, they're all pointing the finger elsewhere. So now you're asking volunteers to troubleshoot a really difficult thing that you can, you also can't even pinpoint where the issue is. So to Selenium, it looks like it could be a test ng problem. To test ng, it looks like it's a Selenium problem. So it's, I, I don't I don't know what to really tell you or help you there, other than you're going to need to find someone to actually investigate, and you're probably not going to get me or someone else to to really dig deep into that one. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. Generic question about Maybe Selenium. Yeah. If um, we are going to have a speakers panel at the end of the conference, that those are nice time to do that. If there. You want to hold off on your question for a little bit? Maybe I could talk to you about it, or? I don't, I, I don't know what your question is, though. <laughs> is, there, is there other questions right now? No. So if I were to contribute to the Selenium code base, are there any design docs for us to start? If you want to contribute to the Selenium code base, uh, so there is some design docs in our wiki pages. Mm -hmm. uh, there's that might be or might not be out of date. 
there's a contributing page uh, in Selenium HQ in the about that has some more information. Um, some of, uh, oh, oh, yes, uh, there's a workshop on Sunday. Is that Sunday? Yeah. Uh, that Simon is running that's going to be contributing to the Selenium code base. And Simon does an excellent presentation of trying to talk about the architecture of Selenium and where you would potentially need to work or what areas of code you would need to work in to, to fix your issue. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes, uh, on the line of this question, if you know, I just wanted to explore like uh, what happens at the back end also. So I took, uh, Simon's workshop, I think it's called, you know, I'm applied for that. So I got a mail saying you just clone the particular uh, GitHub repo and then the instructions to build the particular uh, project. So I just went to the particular link and uh, as a beginner, I'm not able to understand any of this, like the uh, different kind of build process. Oh, like not, is not there any, what do you call it? Is, is there any getting started with Buck in the Selenium build? Hello. Right. Um, <laughs> I'll just repeat. The, the, there are two main problems you're going to see. The first one is um, when you do a buck, when, when you do a build with Crazy Fun, Go, whatever it is, and you haven't got Buck on your path, the very first thing it will try and do is download the the, the Python executable, the pet that contains Buck. Um, if you're on a dodgy Wi-Fi connection or you're on a plane or something, that will fail, and therefore nothing that requires Buck will build. Um, the second thing that might happen is if you have buck on your path and you have a no buck check file in your Selenium repo, it will use whichever version of buck is on your path. Um, if that is not the version, the fork that we have for the Selenium project, you're likely to get a flaky build, normally because um, a, a, a build rule type of something like Mozilla extension doesn't exist. That'll be the error that you see if you read the stack trace. Um, so those are the two common problems you see. I will be going to the beginning of the bug bash when it begins and just settling down with anyone who wants to do um, a build using like the latest version of the source tree and I'll hopefully iron out the problems because this is the second time I've heard someone say this and I haven't seen it myself. And so there's probably just like a systemic couple of issues that need resolving and then it's all good, he says boldly. Does that kind of answer the question, Luke? I think so. Does but so basically, th if, if, if you do encounter issues, bring them up to Simon and or myself, yeah. and we can try to figure out what's going on. If it's a common thread, then we might be able to fix it. Otherwise, we'll, we'll, we just have to see. Uh, we don't know what issues you're particularly having because we don't have them when we're running. Uh, but the Selenium build uh, is not like anything you've ever seen before, and that's because Selenium builds itself in not any way that everyone else does. It, it's a single build system <coughs> that covers Ruby, Python, C Sharp, C++, Java, uh, JavaScript, um, yep. various dialects of JavaScript. Like, it's all coherently held together. Um, but it's really unusual for a project to have all those bits and pieces, and so we needed to put a whole layer of stuff on top of both rake and it's effectively rake underneath the covers. Um, like whenever anyone panics, it's like read deeply, read the documentation on rake, which is a Ruby build tool, and then read the documentation on buck, which is actually pretty well documented. And between those, you can find the answer to a lot of problems, but there's like a handful of things that happen all the time. Um, yeah, take advantage of the fact, like Luke says, that you've got contributors here. Like you've got people who use this thing day in, day out and have run into some of the rough edges and bled, um, and we can share our, our bitter experiences with you. So hopefully it'll get that done. Sure. Any more questions? Simon, do you pass? Or? Hi. Um, thanks for your all hard work and giving a piece of uh, great software, first of all. And like, 
yeah they deserve in like uh, see uh, uh, in the evening i mean like uh, even in the uh, lightning talk uh, we have a uh, we have been talking for the uh, um, spec finalization and uh, there are a future implementation are coming up so uh, i hope you guys have a lot of backlog to build and everything so uh, like there are people uh, out there with a the passion and uh, they kind of lagging in getting started thing and everything like that so like uh, i've already in, uh, initiated this in the last uh, 2014 conference with simon i believe like uh, initiating a board or something how uh, sun microsystem did for java like a jcp and having a user official user group country wise and geolocations wise and having a lead for them everyone i mean like uh, when it comes to a, a implementation feature implementation everything and people may not be knowing whether it is aligned to the project theme or not when they raise the pull request but if it is mentored by some kind of a spec lead or something even when this uh, w3c uh, uh, standard comes in um, maybe we can have a spec for every uh, uh, i mean uh, mentor, um, i mean spec lead for every feature or something so under them we can be mentored by uh, those guys especially you guys because you guys have a pain of maintaining the community with all these uh, small small uh, i agree i did some sometimes back as well the uh, pull requests and bugs and everything and also you have to come uh, contribute to the project as well so hopefully maintaining this uh, such kind of a board uh, user group would speed up the uh, contribution and so we can get there create a product uh, early in the stage so that's what i wish so what is your vision on this have any idea about it my vision on that so i think that's a a good goal that we could get to eventually um i just don't see that many people being those uh spec like those individual section leads we just don't have I guess the resources, the manpower, or however you want to call it, um, we don't we don't have enough people to potentially do that. Um, the, it's a the, it's surprisingly small the W three C group for WebDriver. Uh, you mainly have a few of us, uh, just a handful of uh, essentially people who've been contributing to the project, and then the browser vendors themselves, uh, like one or two representatives from each. Um, talking at, at any of these W3C meetings or bringing it up. But I think what you were kind of touching on is, as another user who's outside of the W3C group, how do I talk about or propose a change or get something in there that you know, I see as, as necessary or, or you know, a good feature to add to the spec? Um, there is, I think maybe you mentioned it, but there is a W3C mailing list that is public that anyone should be able to post to um, for the web driver spec. Um, you just have to, f I, I believe it's actually linked off of the W3C spec itself. And you should be able to find it and then post messages to there. That people do respond to that. The, the spec authors and the people, the browser vendors who are all working on the spec do respond. Um, sometimes if they're not getting a response either uh, maybe no one cares about the topic or no one sees value in it or doesn't know how to respond appropriately to, to that. Uh, I would say there's another thing is to hop onto IRC and talk to people. Uh, I know time zone changes make it difficult. Like most of the time, most of you, normally I don't speak to on IRC because when you're here on maybe normal business hours, that's my night. I wear a 12 hour time shift. So it's, it's really difficult, but you do get some users, especially some of the Mozillians who are in London who do have some overlap time with you guys. So getting into the free node IRC channel for Selenium, and there's also a W3C uh, IRC server that has a, a web driver um, a channel in it too. And most of the spec authors and implementers are in there. Um, and so you can communicate directly with them. Although, let's say the the Microsoft people are in um, Pacific time, so that's twelve hour shift from here, <laughs> twelve and a half. Um, but they they often um, will be receptive to ideas and don't be offended if someone because the one spec is we're really 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 trying to get it out. Um, any new things are 
you have a very slim chance of getting it into the 1.0 version. That's where the 2.0 version comes into play when we can start talking about it. There's uh, another resource. You can log a W3C spec bug, um, and you can even say this is a feature request for level two, um, and that would make people feel a little bit better because you're not, if you log it right now and say this needs to happen, essentially that assumption, there's an assumption in there that you're trying to get it for the 1.0 spec, and that's just really hard to do right now since we are trying to get it all the way shipped and published. Um, so there, there's, there's a few means of communication, but I don't think there's group or area experts that we can uh, really rely on on taking a point of communication with. There, there's just not enough resources there, or I don't think people would volunteer for it. <laughs> yeah, I do agree. Uh, I hope this will, uh, this may be continuing to do that, but like uh, it, it is a right time to set, initiate a, such a, you know, uh, effort to build a community who are, uh, to cultivate their interest or uh, the passion out there with the people and giving them boost and uh, make them to contribute back yep. and making them uh, help to the core community. That's why I'm uh, talking about. Maybe if we, if we start doing that, I mean, like if we spend some time over that, probably it can, uh, we can cultivate more contribution out there. So the backlog of the projects could be far smooth. That, that's what, uh, that, I, that sounds good. I mean, honestly, having you help coordinate or steer people in that way. Most of us have no experience with organizing that in any way. So you're talking to people who are just, we've, we have our day jobs and then we do contributions to this, and the, but we have never organized anything at any larger level. The, the web driver spec is, a, is like a tiny spec. We're, we're, we're we, I think at the, the W3C, like, conferences when all the spec authors come in and uh, come into one like convention type of like conference. Um, you, you see the HTML group has a huge room, lots of people in it. The, our web driver group is often a corner little room with one table with chairs around it. We've got like eight, maybe 10 people sitting in that room and that's it. We're tiny. Everyone else is like huge in comparison. So the, and, and on top of that, I, I'd say almost none have experience with any other working group so or spec. So if there's someone who has, like yourself, seemingly experience with organizing some of these things, I'm sure they'll welcome some ideas to talk. I'm actually just an invited expert. That man, Simon, is the spec author. Co-editor, co sorry, co, co, yeah. David Burns being the other one. But I'm just a lowly invited expert. Any more questions? I'm going to be around at the conference at the Bug Bash um, for the most part. And then there's, uh, I have a workshop, and also there's a speakers panel at the end of the conference. So if you think of anything later, you can ask me then or find me around. But thank you. <laughs>